Hey, brothers and sisters. Today, I want to address the topic of speculations. Now, according to the Bible, are they a good thing or a bad thing? You often hear people saying, Now, I don't know for sure, but I'm just speculating that this is true. Regarding Bible prophecy, many have taken on speculation as a means of interpreting the signs or the timing of the rapture. So let's address this from the Word of God. According to 2 Timothy 2 verse 23, the New American Standard Version says, But refuse foolish and ignorant speculations, knowing that they produce quarrels. According to the Weist Greek translation of the New Testament of this particular verse, 2 Timothy 2.23, it says, But stupid questionings and questionings that come from an uninstructed and undisciplined mind be refusing, knowing that they constantly beget contentions. Vincent's resource says that the idea of ignorant is in the sense of an undisciplined, questioning of an untrained mind, carried away with novelties, questions which do not proceed from any trained habit of thinking. In other words, these speculations are the work and the mark of ignorant men. 1 Timothy 1, 3-7 has this to say regarding speculations. As I urged you upon my departure from Macedonia, Remain on at Ephesus, in order that you may instruct certain men not to teach strange doctrines, nor to pay attention to myths and endless genealogies, which give rise to mere speculation, rather than furthering the administration of God, which is by faith. But the goal of our instruction is love, from a pure heart, and a good conscience, and a sincere faith. For some men... Straying from these things have turned aside to fruitless discussion, wanting to be teachers of the law, even though they do not understand either what they are saying or the matters about which they make confident assertions. So, according to these verses, strange doctrines can arise out of speculations. Speculations cause fruitless discussion and myths. Paul tells us, that these come from people who want to be teachers of the law even though they do not understand what they are teaching or saying but they make confident assertions. Rather than teaching the word of God in context, they speculate as to what it may mean rather than what it really means. Now the Greek word speculation means to seek. Strictly speaking, it means seeking. It was used by the Greeks to describe philosophical inquiry. The idea is to form ideas which are unrelated to reality, normally with a negative connotation. These are worthless imaginings involving exchange of words rather than a true search. Paul is telling Timothy to avoid engaging in controversial discussions. Now, contrary to to engaging in speculations, Paul tells us to combat them. Listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3-5. through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Satan targets his attacks on our minds. We know that because Paul talks about speculations, the knowledge of God, and taking every thought captive. Where do speculations come from? The mind. Where is knowledge rooted? In the mind. And where do our thoughts come from? The mind. It's all in the mind. So in short, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3 through 5 says that speculations are used to refer to suppositions, theories, or opinions arrived at through speculating or conjecturing without knowing the complete facts or having firm evidence, 
especially the firm footing of being scripturally sound. Many of the popular teachings in the prophetic world today do not have a firm footing of being scripturally sound. People are taking scripture and trying to find hidden meanings within it in forming a kind of mystical Christianity. There is nothing new under the sun, for the Apostle John combated this in his day. Gnosos is the Greek word for knowledge, and Gnostics claim to have a special knowledge that was hidden from most people. John was combating these false teachers who claimed to have a special knowledge that no one had. We could say the same thing is happening today with prophecy teachers who speculate using the Word of God as a prop and present secret or hidden knowledge into the scriptures we haven't seen yet. Far from being a positive thing, speculating on the Word of God is extremely dangerous. Paul urges us in the New Testament that speculation results in false teaching. The Word of God is supposed to be our anchor, not used as a prop to come to the desired conclusion of someone's speculative assertions. Taking the plain meaning of the text of Scripture and making wild assertions or interpretations on how it fits in prophetically is essentially adding to or subtracting from God's Word. Proverbs 30 verse 6 says, Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. Deuteronomy 4 verse 2 says, You shall not add to the word which I commanded you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. And the strongest warnings for misapplying God's truth comes in Revelation 22. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Next time you are watching someone who claims to have a new prophetic insight into the scriptures or a timeline for the rapture, remember that speculating on God's word is dangerous territory, and we should have more fear and reverence for the Lord in this matter. Maranatha.